Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Dienstin. Dienstin, this is a 17 year old uh, distilled on the 13th of December 2002, bottled in 2020. I know the distillation date, but I don't know the bottling date, which is a shame. Can't find anything on here either talking about that. Uh, this actually was basically 15 years old in ex bourbon casks until it was recast, regaged, refilled into Pinot Noir um, casks. Um, and that happened actually on the uh, 14th of June 2018. I know that as well, which is good. This is bottled at 50%, which means it's not cast strength. And there were 6,003 bottles, interesting. And this is whiskey base number 162757, and this goes for 144 euros and 90 cents over here in Germany, which is way too much in my opinion. All right, just my personal opinion there, but who knows. All right, good. I'm just going to pull this over here a little bit for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a second bottle. Unfortunately, I only have a sample, but hopefully, ta-da! You see here the Deanston. This is the 2008, a nine-year-old with a brandy uh, finish here. Very, very interesting. Runs between 90 and 100 euros over here in Germany. This is cast strength. This is 56.4%. Um, about 50 euros cheaper than this with the wine. Originally, I wanted to use my Star Ward, um, which was a wine finish. It was a three-year-old for 100 euros. But it was so terrible that I just did not want it as a comparison whiskey. Sorry. All right, so I'm not the biggest fan of Deanston. I'm sorry. Roy loves his Deanston. Roy loves his Deanston 18. He loves his, I think it's a 10. He likes his virgin oak. Um, there's a 15-year-old organic. I was at Deanston with Roy, Mr. Aquavita himself. Um, I was there together with Food Quig from Vancouver. That was in uh, February, March of 2019. Wow. 2020, I wanted to be in, um, at this time of the year, March is the time where I'm a, I teach English at universities, and this is the time where we have our semester break. Um, you would call it also spring break, basically in the States, and so I can usually head off and visit uh, distilleries during this time. Lockdown, Corona, not possible. What a shame. All right, so, um, uh, lost a whole year of traveling due to the lockdown with Corona and visiting and learning and doing and whatever else. Oh, well. All right, um, no reason to have cried over spilled milk. Make the best of the situation, and that's what we've been doing. We've been putting a lot, or I have been putting out a lot of videos recently, especially in English as well. All right, so on the nose. All right, the first thing I get is I do not believe this is 17 years of age on the nose. There's a sharpness in here. There is the wine component, but um, this is a fairly... It smells a fairly young whiskey. All right, that that worries me. All right, going over here to my um, nine-year-old from 2008. This is 2002. This is... Oh, I like... <laughs> the brandy's much, much more evident. There's a sweetness to this brandy is basically than cognac, just not made in that region in cognac. Um, so it's distilled grapes, and that grape, those grapes are actually then put in wood and led to age, and a very, very nice stuff here, brandy. Oh, there's a sweetness, there's a caramel, there's a woodiness, there's a, there's a little bit of apple involved in here. This is really, really nice. I like this, and I get zero, zero um, alcohol burn. Going back to our 50%, this is 56, this is 50. I actually am worried when I breathe in too deeply, almost the nostril hairs are going to be a little bit singed here. Uh-oh. Whiskey Jason says, Salancha, cheers to your health. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Wow. If you don't know my system yet of grading, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to show you how this whiskey up here, very good, down here, very bad. And this was in the middle. And this second hand shows something called the, the sharpness of the alcohol. Now, um, over here, I'm going to go to the brandy real quick. This is 56%. 
this almost burnt my taste buds. All right, it was very, very, very hot. Now this, as I said, 56.4%. Mmm. Mmm. Nine years old. 17 years old. Age is not the differentiating factor here. The alcohol, the 56.4%, it has a supporting role. This is cast strength. You should experience the alcohol, but the alcohol should not distract from the experience. I hope you understand what I'm saying. The alcohol supports the flavors. It lifts, it elevates, it supports, it gives them room to expand. It gives them room to become the main focus of the whiskey. This, on the other hand, this does not support the whiskey. This overpowers the whiskey. So we have supporting and we have an overpowering. This takes the nice little flavors and kind of goes like this and just hammers them away. I had nothing in my mouth for 10 seconds except for alcohol, burn, burn, burn. And this is a 17 year old product. This is 144 euros. You're not gonna get this for under 160 some dollars. This is supposed to be a wow whiskey. I bought this because one of my super fans, these are the people on my Patreons, they support me. They said, Jason, could you buy this? Could you share it? And could you do a video? Of course, no problem. I bought it. I opened it up. I tried it. And I was terribly disappointed about this. Now, the, the, on the paper, it looks like a great whiskey. Um, but actually, in the glass, it's not. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it down to about 40-some percent. All right, taking it from 50 down to 40%. Now, this is non-chilled filtered. This is no color added. This is natural color. Very good job, guys. Um, unfortunately, even at 40%. Mm-hmm. There is still an alcohol burn that distracts me from the taste of this whiskey, which is a shame. There is a great moment at the beginning and the end. I really like how the wine integrates, how the wine totally compounds the malt moment here. Um, this is the good whiskey. If it weren't for the <gasps> burning of my taste buds um, on, a, on a fire pit, um, this is not what whiskey, at least this high price of whiskey, in my personal opinion, should taste like. Um, high price whiskey should taste more like the brandy stuff over here with only nine years, but yet much, much um, better, rounded, smoother, um, silkier, let's use that instead of smooth, well, well done. Um, unfortunately, this was not well done. This is going to get um, a C minus minus D plus plus in my book. And for the uh, price of 144 euros, it's going to actually get a, um, a D minus in my book for value for money. A, why haven't you bought it? Buy, buy it. B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you wouldn't want. D, don't need to buy it. And F, why was it even made? So this is actually, a, you don't need to, don't buy this. Don't buy this. I'm sorry. There's better Deanston products out there. Go buy the 18. Go buy the Virgin Oak. Go buy the 2008 Brandy. Go buy many of the, I had a wonderful Capalo Cataro from Deanston, which was amazing. There was a Centennial, which was fantastic. There are so many absolutely fantastic whiskeys out there from Deanston. Unfortunately, this bottling is it not. <sighs> hmm. So I, yeah, so I review whiskeys in German and I buy the bottle maybe because I want to sh just buy, I thought it was interesting and I buy it, I review it and I warn others either to buy it, <laughs> hey, buy it quick or don't buy it at all. And if, the, if I cannot find a YouTube video about this um, bottling, I do the English version as well. And so um, if I've had in the recent past weeks uh, quite a few videos where it's being don't buy this, don't buy this, don't buy this, it has to do with the fact that I have that problem a lot in my German videos. <laughs> and I actually stopped making um, videos about German whiskey. There's enough German whiskey out there right now to almost fill a whole channel in, in, even in, in, in English and in German. 
Um, and there were so many poorly made whiskies that I decided only to do German whiskies if they received a C or more. I decided not to do that for whiskies um, from other countries. I wanted to, um, I would just say, try to um, avoid bashing my own, the country I live in a little bit too much. So I'm bashing the right now Scotland um, with the Star Ward. I bashed Australia. I bashed some other bourbons. I bashed a lot of Irish whiskies. I bashed uh, Spanish. I bashed French whiskies in the last couple of months. I'm sorry. It's not because I don't like whiskey. It's because I like good whiskey. And as some people said, I think it was um, uh, Mr. Shaw said, life is too short for bad whiskey or for bad liquor. And I'm, I, might, I might actually sacrifice myself and taste some bad ones so you won't have to. Hmm. That might actually be my slogan more and more here. All right. I hope to have some good whiskeys in the future. I hope to have whiskeys where I just totally just, just um, am enthusiastic, euphoric, just love them and just um, tell you how great they are and what you're missing out on. But in this case, the brandy you're missing out on. I must admit, I really like this. This would actually be like a B minus whiskey here. Maybe a C plus plus, B minus minus, but very, very well done. All right, so there's just a little bit of background um, information to my channel and what I'm doing here. Whiskey Jason, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare, 6,003 bottles worldwide, and exotic whiskeys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, question of the day What is your favorite Deanston whiskey? Hmm. Uh, going to go towards the 18. All right, let's go there. All the best. Thank you very much. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye.